So hello and welcome. Happy Tuesday. I'm Frederick Dunn and today we're going to talk about a swarm. And I know that swarms are nothing new. I mean they happen all the time. But here we are August the 29th and what we're looking at is a swarm I collected on August the 28th. Here in the northeastern part of the United States, state of Pennsylvania, we have a second swarm season which coincides naturally with the nectar flow that we're having with goldenrod, asters, and everything else in the environment's providing, some of our bees just feel like they have to reproduce and generate a new colony. It doesn't often even matter how many resources you have in the hive, whether they're full, whether they have plenty of space, nectar, everything else, you're going to get colonies that are going to swarm. Now what's interesting today is I'm going to show you some bits and pieces of equipment that might be helpful to you in recovering a swarm. Now everything looks like it's in line here, right? I've got my cotton butterfly net that I like to use if the swarm collects out on a tree branch, which this one did. All I had to do was shake them into the butterfly net, bring it over, lean it on the landing board of this hive, and inside this hive uh, there's all drawn cone. So this is an eight frame all deep brood box and it's just a brood box you can see that we have a screen that's folded over to reduce the entrance this bee decided to land on my jeans here anyway uh, plenty of ventilation and we narrow the opening because guess what else is ramping up now wasp attacks so they're all doing what they're supposed to do they're on the landing board they're using their nazanoff's gland and uh, they are spreading a pheromone of the queen being here and they're all going in and it looks pretty textbook. Unfortunately what happens is that they get a little wonky on me. The queen decided not to stay. So she kept going in, turning around, going back out and this created a conflict. You notice some of the bees are going in, but also others are going out and pushing against the tide, so to speak. This is a large swarm, so they will have no problem surviving going into winter. We have plenty of time ahead for them to build their resources up. Obviously, we would not take any resources from this colony, and the hive that they came from, equally strong. What kind of hive do you think a swarm this size would be generated from this time of year. Well, it was one of my land's hives. They're large, their populations are abundant, every frame is full in that hive, and they're well insulated, and there's no room for expansion. So, bees are going in, bees are coming out. Let me explain it ahead of time. What they did is they eventually refused to go in altogether. So, they ended up coming out, staging themselves on the front of the hive, flying around in circles around the hive, and re-landing on the front. All of this behavior is due to where the queen ends up going. Now sure, the hive mates, these workers that we're seeing here, they're the ones that dictate and decide where the bees go, so they're the reason she landed on the tree. Now, I'm the one that carried them over and put them on this hive. And as I mentioned, the hive was empty. Drawn comb, great environment for the bees. Has everything they need to go straight to work because they're loaded up with honey. Before they left, these bees can build comb if they needed to, but that's unnecessary. And uh, the queen can start laying right away, but who knows why queens decide not to remain with the hive that we choose for them. But that's what happened. She came out, they clustered on the front, and they refused to occupy the hive. So it becomes annoying to me. These bees are all over the outside. They also spread out up the front. At the very end of this video, you'll notice this video is 22 minutes and 58 seconds long. The last uh, segments of this video is a time lapse. So I'm not gonna show you all of that, but I am gonna show you how I decided to keep them inside, and this was absolutely incidental. I was uh, resigned to the fact that they could stay or leave, and I was just gonna watch them. So they were collected on the 28th, the morning of the 29th. So this morning, I was out watching them. None of them were going in. They were just gonna collect outside, 
And notice I'm holding my coffee cup in my right hand here. That's right. I noticed the queen on the front of the hive and I scooped her into my empty coffee cup. And I'm going to demonstrate the use of this queen muff. So the queen's in my coffee cup and I put the coffee cup in this muff to control her until I could get a hold of her and put her in the queen cage. Well, I can't see through this very well. Yeah, she's in the coffee cup. There she is. She's just wandering around in the bottom of the cup. If I could just get her. Wow, she will not come out of the coffee cup. She's just walking around on the bottom and I can't reach in. Here she comes. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Got her. Right there. Putting her in my queen cage. Are you videoing? Yeah. Thank you. I got her. So now I can pull my hand out. This is the queen in her cage. And see all the bees are going to her so wow she is small hard to find but now I'm going to use her to get them into my hive body here Because this will take up the space of uh, two frames. So we're going to take a frame out of here. We're going to put it in here. The queen is in this cage. We're going to put her on that frame of drawn comb. And then this will pull all the bees from out here inside. And I want to center it. So. So that's a brood frame and there's lots of pollen in it. So I think I'm going to choose this one.
I'm going to put the frame inside of the frame cage. Queen went down in and I put the lid over the top so she cannot get out. And now the queen's in this cage and it's a queen uh, excluder so she can't get out but the workers can get in. And now, with the queen in the isolation cage, they should change their minds and all go in. So now that was that, and this is the queen muff that's used to remove workers from queen cages when they come, so you can get the queen out, mark her, do whatever you'd like to do without risking her flying away. And it worked, of course. The queen is on a frame where she can start laying straight away. All of the workers and nurse bees have access to her. And we're going to keep her in that cage for a while until she establishes a good brood pattern and everything. It also lets us assess the queen a little bit. Now if we inspect it in three or four days and there are no eggs in there, we have to get the frame out of the cage and release her because that means they flew out with a virgin queen. But given the size of the swarm and the way they're attracted to her, I highly suspect we have a laying queen here. So we'll do a follow-up on that, but I wanted to share with you how I managed to get the queen with my coffee cup. So there's a vote for drinking coffee when you're looking at swarms. And then, of course, transferring from the coffee cup into the queen cage inside the queen muff. And then, of course, using that queen cage just to hold her while I set up the queen isolation cage, which is what we put the frame in. And then release the queen in there, close it up, and uh, we're good to go. And, of course, as you can see, they did go in. 
And if you'll continue watching, uh, there's the time lapse sequence, which started at sunrise this morning and extends right through all of the bees finding their way inside. And if you watch carefully around the 17 minute mark, you'll see me scoop the queen up with my coffee cup. Now, why not just grab the queen with my fingers? Because she was burying herself and scooting underneath the workers that were on this butterfly net. So I had never done that before. It just occurred to me since I had my coffee cup, I wanted to grab the queen before she got away. So I scooped her with a good cup of workers. So that's how it worked. And these bees holding on to one another, that's festooning. Maybe they just don't believe the queen has gone inside. Maybe they just don't want to give up hanging out on the outside. But of course they did and they go in. So I want to thank you for watching this. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Maybe you got some ideas on how to collect your queen and isolator someday. Thanks a lot for watching.